we are at after three o'clock. Um, let's see. The uh, you will have all seen that the viewer outfit browser went to release last week. Uh, and so now you can all be taking pictures of your outfits and filing them away. Um, and we have had updates for that for the QuickTime replacement viewer and Bento has gone to release candidate. Yay! So those are both still in the pipeline, both doing very well in the early crash rate reports. We will most likely release uh, the VLC viewer to the general release next week if it stays good. Uh, we also blocked a bunch of old viewers that actually should hardly affect anybody. There were only a few thousand people on those. Uh, and made some announcements about dropping support for old platforms. <clears throat> so, uh, but again, uh, those platforms didn't have very many people on them. So, uh, we're, we're doing our best to maintain backwards compatibility where we can, but when the underlying technology we're relying on is uh, dropping support for things, it, it, it's actually not possible for us to maintain that support ourselves. So, uh, hopefully people will find ways to upgrade to things that are well supported. Right, well that was that was why we that was why we dropped Vista. Although it was long past time anyway. Uh, I do the our testing with FLV has been mixed. Um, yeah. The the flash formats and the QuickTime formats are both containers, and what matters is what's inside the container and what the structure of the container is, whether you can decode it or not with other things. Um, so uh, the answer is maybe. Um, and the more important answer is stop using those formats because there are much much better ones that we definitely support available so fix the content sorry but that really is the best answer uh Right, and I'll repeat something else that was in the blog post that I helped write this week, which is if you're on a 32-bit version of Windows, get a 64-bit version. If you absolutely have to be using Windows 7 or Windows 8, get on the 64-bit version. Almost any machine you are still running can do those. And, it, and that will have less than half the crashes according to our data, uh, than the 32-bit than the, uh, versions, even if you're running a 32-bit viewer. So hopefully people will follow that up. Uh, but uh, so, and we expect to be doing very active development on the 64-bit version. Uh, again next week, so I'm, we're we're going to try and get that out the door. So that's a a, a relatively big push now. Where we have all of the 
infrastructure that we've been waiting for for that. Well, that we've been needing for that in place now. Um, and speaking of which, uh, that infrastructure, some of that infrastructure is stuff that will affect how the public sources expect to be built. Uh, we'll update the wiki documentation and maybe I'll actually do something of a little presentation about it next week or next at the next one of these meetings in two weeks. Uh, I'll sort of talk people through it. I'll certainly post something on open source dev and we'll update the wiki. There's a newer version of auto build. Uh, there's a separate directory that you want or a separate file that you want to have downloaded. We have it in a repository of its own for controlling what the uh, compiler switches and so forth are. Uh, it's basically we've extended our infrastructure to allow us to build to to very easily build all of the libraries that go into the viewer with the same compiler switches, regardless of what build system they're using and so forth. So um, because we've run into a bunch of problems that are traceable to the fact that that wasn't done. So uh, we're, you know, kind of extending the environment a little bit and um, there's there's some some updates that if you want to use our process, you'll or something based on it, you'll have to pick those up. Um, obviously, since all of those switches are in a separate file and it's even in a separate repository, um, uh, if you disagree with our choices of compiler switches, you can change them in one place and recompile all your libraries to use your set. Uh, so we'll have a we'll have a little bit of stuff about that next time, uh, and the wiki will be updated with that documentation. So uh, all of that will appear first in our 64-bit in the in the version that includes 64-bit support. Uh, we will be building both a 64-bit and a 32-bit Windows viewer. Um, Linux, we will be building only a 64-bit viewer. And Mac, we will be building only a 64-bit viewer. So uh, that's the plan. So we'll have four, four possible downloads instead of only three. All of which should be pretty transparent to most people. Uh, so let's see. Um, no real progress to report on the voice branch. It's just been on the back burn for, burner for a little bit. Um, so that's the news. So the floor is open. Um, also, we have we have brought the crash rate down significantly in the last couple of releases, uh, and we expect to be bringing it down even further. Both because the, I think the 64-bit version will, for for memory starvation reasons, probably take longer to use up memory and crash. Um, but uh, also, we've been putting in a lot of infrastructure to do various kinds of better protections. So we revamped the all the exception handling. That version, that set of changes is in the VLC viewer. Uh, in an upcoming version, possibly the 64-bit viewer, we will have a big 
revamp of all of the singleton construction and, de and destruction to make sure that that automatically happens in the right order. That should eliminate some logout crashes, uh, or at least, at the very least, get us better data on why they happen. Uh, so we're we're doing a bunch of a bunch of kind of systemic cleanup things that uh, are actually having a noticeable effect. Um, I don't know, Dax. Oh, hey Oz, do you mind if I put in a plug for my uh, uh, new thing that I've started looking into? Oh no, not at all. Good idea. Yeah, uh, so this is not not Bento. I mean, Bento is still doing its thing and we're working on, uh, uh, you know, RC for that. But uh, the other thing is uh, we started doing a bit of digging into uh, questions about avatar rendering cost and... and uh, Rendering cost for objects in general, and and land impact, and that kind of stuff. We've we've got a uh, a few different issues that have accumulated, uh, where people have raised various concerns about the current cost functions, and uh, you know, given the the nature of these backwards compatibility things, uh, you know, some are probably fixable and some probably aren't. But at least we're going through the exercise of of trying to investigate that stuff now. So uh, if you know of cases where things seem to be behaving in an unreasonable or, or unexpected way, um, make sure we're aware of them. Uh, you know, if there's not already a JIRA, please file a JIRA and uh, give us a shout about that. Right, so what we're going to be doing is taking uh, a bunch of representative cases that we know about and problem cases that people point out to us and try to take as carefully scientific a set of measurements about what the real impact of things is on a wide range of machines uh, so that we can adjust the numbers we use, to, the, the, the formulas that we use to make a, a reasonable general approximation in the in the rendering cost for things so uh, it's it's been an, it's been a while since a, a deep dive was taken in that area yeah uh, and uh, you know there have been a lot of features added to second life since so we're gonna see if we're gonna see if anything needs to be tweaked in response to that uh, it is it is by no means a given that anything will change, uh, but uh, it is a real possibility.
the what the viewer does now is well what our viewer does now and which i and i i believe this was imported hopefully unchanged into m many other viewers by now um, is each viewer reports what it thinks the avatar rendering cost for all the avatars it can see is and the simulator um, creates a an average of those um, with a little bit of heuristics for filtering out unreasonable values uh, and uh, and then reports that average to everyone in the region. Um, the theory behind that was that at some point we could begin making decisions about whether or not to render avatars based on that average without ever downloading everything there is to know about the avatar. Um, that part has never been done in the viewer yet. It's, it's, a, it's a, a possible future project. So, for example, if I jump into a region and the region reports, you generally get those reports long before you actually get the avatar appearance messages. So uh, it's, a, it's a very quick report because it's, it's all canned data on the simulator and you get it right away. Um, potentially there are some race conditions there, but the experience so far seems to be that you get the report on the on the the average rendering cost for the people around you right away. Uh, so in theory, if you had a low limit, you could use the server's report to decide. I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna download data for that avatar. I'm just gonna display them as a as a as a ghost or something. Um, Right, but the uh, that preemptive use of the average data is not available. We also use that average data to to take a look at what people are you you know doing with their avatars. So we basically don't take anybody's word for what they claim their own rendering cost is, but we trust them in the aggregate to report on other avatars. Uh, that's basically correct, right? Okay. <clears throat> the decision that each viewer uses today to decide whether to render somebody as a as a jelly doll or or not is exclusively based on its own calculation of the rendering cost for that for that avatar. We we put the infrastructure in place to allow it to use the average value computed by everybody else but that but code to do that does not yet exist the other thing that uh, each viewer reports is for each avatar a single bit you know just a boolean uh, of whether or not I am rendering this avatar as a jelly doll because it's over my limit. The viewer does not report what its limit is. Uh, the simulator then counts how many, how many viewers are reporting on each avatar and how many of those are rendering, uh, you, you know, for whom the, the, you are over the limit and reports that to you and only to you. Um, so if I ha uh, if if there are what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven people sitting around on the on the floating chairs here. Uh, so there are ten other uh, well plus I guess that's Cinder in the middle. Uh, usually, yep, Cinder. Uh, so there are a dozen of you out there. So I would get back a count that says there are a dozen, uh, ignoring the people out on the balcony. Um, I would get, if, 
I would get back an account that says there are a dozen people reporting on you and, you know, this many of them are not rendering you because you're over their limit. And that's what the little pop-up notices up in the corner are based on is when those, when the, the percentage of people uh, around you are not rendering you or are rendering you changes by, it crosses some thresholds, right? Um, that, that's what triggers those little notices. Uh, so you get told once, I, I think it's once a minute, the, the viewer pulls for that um, and gets told how often, you know, whether or not they're being, they're being seen. But the, the, the project fear is talking about is, is studying whether or not, uh, you know, particular um, object features are being reasonably well accounted for in the rendering cost calculation. Uh, it's generally speaking, it's everyone who's been in the region recently. The the um, the simulator doesn't clean out old reports. So if if I were to get up and leave right now, tel teleport away to some other region out, out, of, out of sight, then uh, my reports about what all of your rendering costs were would persist for a little while. And the next time, it, it, when they got to a certain age, it would, it would throw them away. I, I forget what the, what the timeout is. It's, it's not very long, but it's, uh, it's not synchronous with me leaving. Basically, there's a in the internal report. There's a in, in the internal data. There's a there's a timestamp, and when they get too old, they get discarded. Uh, well, I, <laughs> I'm always hesitant to make statements about uh, that have anything to do with the term radar, since we don't have a feature named that, and it doesn't seem to exactly match uh, any feature we do have. So uh, I don't think I'll have to comment on that. Right, there's a, there's a deliberate delay in when we pop up the, the messages after your appearance changes. So when your appearance changes, if you change your outfit, right? So here I'm going to change my, my outfit from, uh, from one thing to another, right? And my appearance will change. And uh, that will cause a series of notices to come up about what my complexity is. But any notices about how many of you can see me or are rendering me um, will be delayed by a couple of minutes. Uh, I think it's at least 90 seconds. Um, and... Uh, because it's waiting for all of you to fully see the changes and report on and provide new reports to the simulator on whether or not I'm being rendered. Um, and then it'll eventually pop up a little notice that lets me know that because I changed my appearance.
Right. It is important to note that for a variety of reasons, Avatar rendering cost will not be the same for everyone, although it's it's a pretty narrow range. And I, I don't know. It's it's possible that yeah. Um, it's possible that in the course of fiddling with these numbers, we'll figure out more about why that is and make the difference go go down even further. But I, I, that isn't one of the big goals. That is that is why I put the big comments into the routine that calculates the cost to say please don't make changes here without sending them through the Linden Lab code base because even though right now even though the difference is calculated between by by different instances of viewers are slightly different I think that's mostly due to the way the calculation is done. Um, and not due to the fact that viewers are running radically different code. Um, uh, if we get to the point where we're all doing an entirely different calculation, the utility of that goes down pretty dramatically. Um, but but uh, the, the question that Veer asked is important with respect to that. Any decision you make about whether or not to render someone else is based only, right now, only on what your viewer thinks their cost is, not what anybody else's viewer thinks their cost is. So someone else reporting a bad cost for a, a, a radically different cost, whether it was better or worse, has no effect on what your viewer does with anybody else. It's just sort of interesting, informative in data, um, but it isn't actually acted upon right now. So the fact that you're calculating a different rendering cost shouldn't actually be very important to anybody. If you if you see really large differences, by which I mean, you know, 10,000 or more, uh, even a 2K difference is pretty large. In my experience, that's that's a pretty big difference. But if you certainly, if you see a five k difference, I'd be curious about uh, I'd be curious about seeing a repro for that because uh, that would seem to be a, a difference big enough to to try to track down what the what the cause for it is. Oh, good, Whirly. Um Make sure Veer has seen it so that it's he adds it to the list of. Interesting issues. Uh, Petra, there are some factors that have something to do with distance, especially in that they affect how how the level of detail is computed. I'm not entirely sure that that's appropriate, and that's one of the things that we may look at.
That does sound like a, an interesting case. Other other topics for today? Or do we get out early? Uh, yes, probably, Cinder. Um, there was some problem with that. I'll have to, I'll have to track it down and, 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 and remind myself what it was. But I'll, I'll try to get to that. Uh, better late than never. Hi. Um, is there a fix in the works for SEC 2002? Let me see what that is. Uh, yes, there is a fix in the works for that. Although I should, I should qualify, I should qualify that. Um, there are, there, there are a, an almost infinite number of ways to make deceptive looking links. Uh,
Uh, so use it, it, you are responsible for what you click on. Yeah, that one's in, I believe it's the next maintenance release. Which has been trying to get through QA. I expect you'll see an RC early next week. Nope, just that one. Um, I did send it on to Microsoft and haven't heard. I mean, they acknowledge that they got it, but I haven't heard uh, whether they came to some new conclusions. So, yeah, um, my threat certainly worked when I said Microsoft thinks it's NVIDIA. Um, a certain someone felt the urge to send me a trace, but the other several I got were all from NVIDIA. Which breakage? Well, he's constantly linking to breakage. Right, right. The bug Whirly linked to is not a very distinctive <laughs> identifier. Oh. A bunch of people who wish to comment on it, indeed. I don't believe we have a response on this yet. Need to read through all the new comments. Okay. It'll come up in the triage on Monday. Actually, um, for it to come up in triage, it needs to be info provided. So, unless you believe there's additional information that still needs to be supplied, I will click that button. Thank you.
ahead. Um, I won't respond to this today, but we will review this again on Monday. Other topics, or can we all run away? Okay, I guess we're at the standing around and be sociable after the meeting part of the meeting. Okay, what, are we, what were your complaints? Okay, you know where to find me. I'm in New York. Bye, all.